Okay, I am set up here at uh, the coffee table in the living room and you'll have to just excuse my voice. Um, I woke up without a voice today. Um, I'm not feeling very well, but uh, I really wanted to start um, working on this. This kind of thing just gets me really excited. Um, and I love watching these kind of videos, so I wanted to film this process for you. So what I'm doing is I'm getting my son's um, kindergarten work set up. We are doing the Clover Crate system. Um, I will explain that uh, in a second. Um, but basically what I'm doing is I'm gathering all of the worksheets and things like that that we have for his kindergarten. So because we live in Canada, it just made more sense to actually print out his kindergarten program. Um, I was able to, this is uh, the Simply K program from Masterbooks, and it's um, just such a really nice approach, and it fits exactly where he's at in life. This is a brand new program. Um, in fact, I think the release date for the actual book product isn't even until a couple days. But because I was going to download it, I had access early um, and so I have begun printing out all of his curriculum and the program itself was only $30 for the downloadable version I think the hardcover or the actual workbook itself is like it's also 30 some dollars but to ship to Canada was really expensive so anyways um, I use the HP instant ink program and I can print um, Currently, I have my settings set to 700 pages a month uh, for just $24 Canadian. And you print by page, not necessarily how much ink you use. So a page like this um, prints the same as if it were a page like this, or if there was just one letter on this page. Um, it's a really affordable way to print, and I absolutely love it. Um, if you have an HP printer and you're interested in that, I'll set, put some information in the description box as well as a link to um, my referral link and you'll get a free month to try. Um, and yeah, it's just really great. Even if you only print like a few pages a month, they have different plans um, and you can actually print for free. So if you're... Sorry, I got an interruption. Um, basically, there's different plans for the HP Instant Ink program, and you can even print for free if you print less than 25 pages a month. So it's really great. You can switch back and forth between the plans um, to suit what serves you best. So anyways, printing his curriculum has been no problem. <clears throat> I have just the first few pages here with me because I am going to just start um, going through the um, the syllabus, the like table of contents, the scope and sequence, whatever. Um, and I am going to figure out what is working for each, what he's doing for each week. So this is a look at the scope and sequence. And so for week one, he's going to work on the letter A. He's going to learn, um, understand weather terms, review colors, cutting skills, and tracing. This is the, these are the rhymes he's going to learn. And um, this is the Bible work that he's going to do. Um, and then there's a column for a due date. So he works on a different letter for each week of the school year. And that is going to work so great for him. I have printed a lot of other resources to help him, um, with his letter recognition um and then so yeah so then i'm just going to go through each week and figure out what i have and what other activities that we can do to help facilitate that learning so for instance in week 12 he's going to be learning to uh, match and mate socks um and he's so he's also learning like life skills um through this curriculum um, for week 19, he's going to be understanding street signs. So I might look for activities like on Pinterest, like worksheets, or um, just other fun activities that he can do to help him understand street signs, things like tying a shoe, his five senses, and all about him, him and his birthday and things like that. So anyways, um, the system that I'm going to do is called the Clover Crate System. That's just sort of the loose name for it. Um, Christy Clover is a homeschooler. She has um, a couple, um, like a homeschooling book and other sort of resources um, to help moms homeschool and to um, organize their homeschool. So anyways, the Clover Crate System 
is basically where you pull apart all of your workbook workbooks and you divide the work into file folders for each week. So for week one, as we're doing like Colt's schoolwork, we I'm going to put in all of his week one activity work for his Simply K. I'm also going to put in any other worksheets that I have that will help him understand this sort of thing. Um, and then I will pull that folder out each week and then we will work on that week's work. Um, it's very simple to just sort of move folders around or move work around if you need to. There's a lot of work up front in putting this all together, uh, but for me it's really fun. I enjoy it and I'm that's why I'm feeling sick and I'm still wanting to do it. So um, I'll just give you a little look at what I've got going on here. I've got some calendar pages for him, um, some connect the dots sort of stuff things for numbers and I also printed some things for my daughter who's in fourth grade. We've got some sheets over here. I also have this highlights book and this is preschool but it has lots of um, shape activities and uh, writing and matching and there's lots of letter stuff in here. So I am actually I was going to tear pages out, but I, I just don't like that ragged look. So I'm actually going to take this to Staples and have them cut the binding um, so the pages will be nice and clean. So I'm not really going to deal with this book today. Um, we have got a bunch of books, um, these like workbooks and things from the Dollar Tree. And this is one that uh, I think would be really good to work with this upcoming year. Um, it's all about numbers. So what I am doing with these is I started with this one. So this is uh, a pre-K book, but all the pages inside, I took the staples out and then I just cut the pages in half. And then I'll just put these pages into his appropriate week folders. So that's what I'm gonna do with this. Um, some of these books are probably a little bit more advanced for where he's at, but as he grows and as he goes throughout the year, if I see that he's really mastering a lot of these things, I can just go into some of these workbooks and re-update some of my folders. But the bulk of the work is already done for me. So I am really interested in doing this system because last year we had some really traumatic things happen in our life and homeschool got really pushed aside. And it was... Um, a lot do because I wasn't ready I couldn't plan I just I couldn't even think we had we lost a baby and I just I couldn't <laughs> I just couldn't do anything um, and so homeschool just got set aside because I couldn't plan what we needed to do even though we had open and go curriculum it just I couldn't so to have everything organized on the front end um, It'll be really simple to say, okay, this is our, this is exactly where we're at. Here's all our worksheets. Here's everything to go. Um, and even if my husband were to do um, homeschool for us, because I may be actually working at our church for a few days uh, this homeschool year, um, he can uh, do school very simply and easily because everything is prepped and ready to go. So I'm going to work. Okay, so here's where I'm at. Um, I went through all of the curriculum that I have printed and I made sure that everything was in order so for instance here's lesson one and I put everything together and I double checked that it was all in the right order and then I stapled it together so this will be one week's worth of his curriculum and then I went through and I did it for each of the weeks um, that I have printed so my um, HP instant ink actually ran out uh, I I hadn't used a color cartridge in quite a while, um, and so I ended up using it up. So instead of some of these being like nice and yellow, they're actually more purple, which is kind of fun. Just kind of um, switching things up, I guess. <laughs> so I printed for everything that I was able to. I'm up to level um, lesson 16. So these are actually going to go into sheet protectors. Um, I bought a big pack of them. I think there's a hundred and I got them at Costco for uh, $10. So these are going to go into, um, what do you call it? The sheet protectors. And then this is actually his binder. And I had it set up a couple years ago for taught school. 
Um, we didn't do a whole lot with it because he just really wasn't ready to do learning. So I'm actually going to switch it out for kindergarten. I don't know if I'll actually change the the wording on the side. Probably not for this year. Um, once he moves into a higher grade, I probably will. However, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put all of these sheets and sheet protectors and stick them in there. And that'll be my lesson binder for his curriculum. So um, <clears throat> we've got the cover page. And then this is the quick start guide and this is what I was kind of comparing to make sure that I had all of the lessons all the pages printed and I did think I think I've come up against one that was not printed so what I did was I don't know if I can find it really quick um, no that's not it um, anyways I just stuck a sticky note on it and I did not staple it um, so that when I get my ink cartridge in, it's, it's shipping like sometime next week, um, I can go ahead and, and print that page or just double check. Okay, so this is the table of contents. Um, I put a sticky note here. These are from Erin Condren, um, just to print lesson 16 all the way to the end. There's also um, a diploma, some book suggestions, a teacher resource page, some mini books and charts, and ABC cards that need to be printed as well. So, um, and then before each lesson, there's also lesson prep pages. So let me show you those really quick. I don't want to wrinkle anything. Um, <clears throat> there is like a quick start guide, um, things that are in the course, things to know. Here's my scope and sequence. And I'm probably not going to fill anything out for the due date, um, just in case we kind of get off track or anything like that. If something takes longer or shorter, I'm just, I, I don't want to mess with that. So anyways, um, here's a sheet for all of the course supplies that I'll need. And I think I have everything. Yes, I have everything on hand. I might see what I can purpose as a book basket. Um, but these are the lesson page sheets. So what I'm going to do is I could stick these in the folders, but I have a feeling I'm just, I have a feeling I, I won't pay attention. So I'm going to actually put these in sheet protectors and put them in my uh, teacher lesson binder. So here, so when I go to actually plan, um, I will have all of this. I'll just need to pull out the binder. I won't have to pull out like the folders. So for some reason, I didn't print all of these when I was doing this because some of these were backed onto some of the pages and I didn't, I, like I said, I wanted to have them separate. So only some of them I printed. I didn't print all of them. Um, so I made a sticky note on one of my sheets here to tell me which ones I have and which ones need printed. So, um, yeah. So then when I do my planning, which I like to do every two weeks, I can go through and I can look at two weeks worth of lesson prep pages. I can see the supplies that I need so I can pull those out, um, look at the objectives and see like all of these extended activities and then fill in with any like hands on things that we want to do. So anyways, that is what I've done so far. Um, once I get my cartridges in, I'll be able to start printing my daughter's curriculum as well. We've done the same thing. She's doing um, lessons for a living education uh, level four and we've done the same thing we've bought it the downloadable version i'm going to print everything off and just do the very same thing she's going to have her own set of folders um yeah so okay so now i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to just go through some of these resources and i'm going to start putting them together so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take lesson one i'm going to compare with my scope and sequence and I'm going to see the items uh, or the things that he's going to be learning for that week. And then what I'm going to do, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through any of my workbooks and I'm going to see what we have for learning weather, reviewing color, colors, um, cutting skills, and tracing. Because I have so many of these little workbooks and different things, um, I'm just going to go ahead and go through those and put all of those papers inside his week one folder and I'll show you what all of that looks like. But that is what I'm going to do next. Okay, so I've gone ahead and prepped as much material as I could. So this is lesson one um, and I have, here's his um, lesson for the week all stapled together. 
And then I printed off these sheets from preschoolmom.com. And basically what he's going to do with these is he's going to use different manipulatives or um, like, you know, counting bears or like little mini popsicle sticks or mini erasers, pom-poms, whatever, um, to outline the letters. <clears throat> you could use Play-Doh. There's all kinds of different things you can do with this. You can also use like dot markers and we'll change it up each week, but this will just help him uh, recognize his letter formation. And we worked on a lot of his letters last year, but he just wasn't ready. Um, so this year he seems a lot more ready. He knows a few of his letters. Um, he's really good with like uh, numbers and colors, but his letters were just something that really tripped him up last year. Um, so I did go ahead and try and cut some of these pages out of that highlights book. I just used some scissors to score along the side. Um, I stopped doing it because I think I just will use an X-Acto knife. I decided I didn't want to wait to go to Staples to have the binding cut. Um, I just wanted to get on the project. So anyways, all of these pages have a front and a back. Um, and so this is A and there was another side to this. Um... Okay, hold on one second. I've kind of got things upside down. Okay, let me start that again. Um, so this is page 11. Um, so this is the back or the front of this page. But he is doing tracing in his um, first lesson. So that actually works really perfect. We'll just have him uh, do the tracing. And then there is um, letter practice. And then some over here and on the back this actually had like two it was a two page spread and you're supposed to find all the things that start with the letter A so what I've done is I've decided just to cut as it is and um, what I'm gonna do is on the following week when it's time for to do letter B We'll just do this page as a review. So this will be working with A, and I'll have him find all of the A items. And we can even use this for B as well, if we can find any um, B items. There's a bicycle, there's blue, um, you know, things like that. So we can, um, I plan to just do that sort of as a review. So then I have these pages from the Dollar Tree, um, from that one book that I cut up, The Brain Bites. <clears throat> And these two um, are, you know, double backed or whatever. There's something on each side. Um, and it is different letters. So this one is A and obviously this one is B. So the idea will be that we will just carry these sheets over. So once we complete this, I'll just put it in the following week's folder. So it'll be in there and we're not wasting. We're doing both sides. So we start with A. And then I had printed this um, Apple Craft, and basically it's just super simple where you color everything and then he'll cut it out and then glue it together. Um, so A for Apple, so that is in his, uh, a, his a folder. So this is just some of the stuff that I have for now. Um, again, I haven't gone through this whole highlights book. I'm sure there's lots more activities. Um, I'm sure there are lots more things that we can do. Um, Cause like I mentioned, they're learning about weather and I don't have anything for weather. So this is just part of where the planning of homeschool comes in and um, just searching through the things that I've saved like on my Pinterest board um, and looking for activities that'll reinforce some of that. I'm not gonna go crazy simply because um, I'll be working and I also have another daughter, um, a daughter to homeschool as well. Um, and just the age that he is, he's five and, um, I don't want to overwhelm him with a lot of stuff, but I do want to have activities for him because he does participate in school. Um, and he is of age to be in school. Um, and yeah, so anyways, that's how that's working. And so there are a couple other things that I did add into some of the weeks that I'll show you. So this is one that I just actually have to clean off. So I had printed these off last year. These are called spot and dots and they are from the website from ABCs to ACTs.com and she's got lots of really great resources on there. So basically you can kind of see the idea is um, you print these pages, I laminated them double sided um, and they just use like, uh, we've used a dry erase marker and just circle all the C's. You don't have to laminate these, you could just 
print them um, and use like a bingo dapper or a dot marker or what just a plain old marker whatever to just denote where all the C's are and he really likes doing this so again what I've done is because C and D are on both sides I'll first stick C in the appropriate folder and then move when we've done this activity I'll move it into the next week's folder so it's just really simple um, and I'm excited because I I know I'm prepping stuff for next year and once all of this is done it's done I don't have to touch this stuff again um, so yeah anyways I'm looking forward to that so these are the rest of my pages and some of my work that I have not yet got into the appropriate lessons because so for all of his numbers we have purchased, well, I'm going to be purchasing the math program that goes along with this course. Um, it just isn't out yet. So that will release, I think, September 10th. Um, so we'll work on that when it comes out. I'll do kind of the same process, print everything, stick it in the appropriate folders. So I'm not going to do anything with any of these like number sheets at this point just because we don't have that math program yet um, so I'll work on that when that all is released but for now I'll just go ahead and stick this aside so these are some calendar pages that I printed out from this readingmama.com I love a lot of her things um, I'm subscribed to her email newsletter and whenever she releases free things um, I usually print it um, if it's appropriate for us I love 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 her stuff <clears throat> So this is some calendaring pages, and then I'm going to have him work on these kind of each day. So basically he has the opportunity, what we'll do is we'll stick these inside of um, a dry erase sleeve so that he can erase things and do it each day. So he can kind of like color in, you know, September. Um, each day I will write out the date, and I'll have him say it, and then he'll write it as well. We'll also circle which day of the week it is. Um, and then he'll do his counting down here. So if it's the 13th, I'll have him count each one of these up until the 13th. We'll put a little, we can do this in a few different ways. So we can do different counting items, counting bears, wooden blocks, like mini erasers, pom-poms, whatever. Um, or like we can use those like little clear gems that kind of you can put them in like a vase filler or whatever. But you can see the number through each one. Um, or we could just not use anything and have him just count up until where he is. Um, so there's lots of different ways to do this. I am not sure how I'm going to incorporate this yet. I don't know if I'm going to do like a daily binder for him or if we'll just have a separate thing for a calendar, like a, a whole little like a book bin or something like that, or a spot where we just hang his uh, dry erase pocket with this in it. I'm not really sure what I'm doing with it yet. Um, <clears throat> but I just did want to show you this resource. She had a few different um, options for printing. So as you can see, I went from October to December. So she has like you could print like a Christmas tree or there was a, a gift. She also has Northern Hemisphere and um, Southern Hemisphere. So if you are in the Southern Hemisphere, there's like suns and different things like that because, you know, their seasons are different. So in Canada, where I am, Thanksgiving actually falls uh, in October. So initially her uh, icon for November was a turkey. And while I'm American living in Canada, that makes sense because we kind of, you know, celebrate a little bit. It doesn't totally make sense for the country that we live. So I re she had alternatives for some of these. And so I printed the maple leaf, which is actually really appropriate because the Canadian maple leaf is like on our flag. Um, so anyways, <clears throat> that is what he's going to be kind of doing for some of his calendar work. Um, so I just wanted to show you that. There's a lot of things for me to think through. Um, this is the first child that I am doing kindergarten with. My daughter was actually in public school for kindergarten. Um, so here in Canada, you do two years of kindergarten, um, junior kindergarten, which is called JK, and senior kinder kindergarten, which is known as SK. 
it's all day it's all week um, and it's a really full kind of thing. She, Aubrey had an amazing kindergarten teacher who just believed in play-based learning and student-led learning. It was just incredible. She had the best start to her education. So, um, I want to, this is like doing kindergarten is all new for me. So I just want to give him a lot of opportunity and there's things that I just don't know yet of how we're going to do certain things. So for instance, like the calendar system, I'm not sure how we're going to do that yet. Um, but I, when I compared different calendar options, like on Pinterest, um, this is what spoke to me the most and, um, provided us, I feel like with a lot of good learning and practice for him. So um, that's why I just kind of don't know some of the systems yet, uh, but I thought I would just, you know, kind of share with you what I do have. We are going to be doing a, um, what do you call it? <laughs> Sorry, I'm sick. I'm like, I can't think. We're doing a space unit at some point this year, and that was in a pack of like free craft pages. So I thought either we're going to, I'm going to stick this with his letter S um, folder, or we'll use it for him for the space unit. He's just going to kind of join us. Like he's five. We'll just kind of incorporate him if, and when he wants to be. Um, and, um, I've printed these, uh, hundred sheets pages. Um, Aubrey, my daughter had asked if we could keep track of how many, like if how many days we've been in school for a hunt. Oh my gosh, I can't talk. She asked if we could keep track a hundred days of school. So, um, my friend from Raising Joyfulness, um, showed this on her Instagram page and she got it from Teachers Pay Teachers. It was a free resource. Um, and so she emailed it to me. And so what we're going to do is we're just going to basically do like a bingo dopper or a dot marker for getting up to a hundred days. And yeah, so I printed that and I think I have one for each kiddo. Um, that resource also had other sheets included. So this is one where you write the numbers to 100. My daughter's in fourth grade, but I feel like she could really do some of this stuff and just, um, she's eight going into fourth grade. And I feel like she could work on some of this stuff just as refreshers. So some of these pages have uh, different just prompts. And I know there's a couple more that I think I printed, maybe not. Um, I may not have, but there were other ones where you could just fill in the numbers for like skip counting by twos, skip counting by fives, skip counting by threes, ones where you filled in all the odd numbers, ones where you filled in all the even numbers. Um, and I guess I didn't print those, but those will be good for when we get to that point in my son's learning and even just to have Aubrey do it as a refresher. She's like learning multiplication and all that, but, um, I don't think any of these things can be done too many times. Like, I don't think she'll get sick of it because she loves school. <laughs> um, then this was just something I printed for her. This is um, a fourth grade sight work list. Again, this is from uh, this reading mama. Again, I love her stuff. So she has third grade, fourth grade, and fifth grade sight words. She also has kindergarten and first grade. And she has or kindergarten through second grade. And then this file was third grade through fifth grade. So, and then for this one, you just have your child read through all of these. And if they take one second, you put a plus. If they take longer than a second or they don't know the word, you put a minus and you just keep practicing those ones until basically it turns into a plus. So she's a really great reader. So I have a feeling she'll just fly through this and it may not even be necessary, but I printed it anyways. So that's kind of it for some of my um, documents I have printed. I am going to get my folders in a little bit and start stuffing the folders. Okay, it's later in the evening um, <clears throat> and I wanted to share with you some of the folders that we got. So these are from Staples, um, and all the boxes come with a hundred folders. You would do well if you're going to buy folders from Staples to buy the Staples brand. Um, to be perfectly honest, I don't know why anyone would get a more expensive folder when these were significantly cheaper than some of the other ones, but everybody has their own style, I guess. So anyways, these are actually ivory. I wanted, um... 
I didn't want like the traditional green hanging folders and the traditional like manila yellowish sort of folders that you typically have because this is going to be something that we use for a long time I wanted um I just wanted it to reflect my own style so the white folders are going to be for my son and he will have one folder for each week that we are in school. Um, I'm still playing with our timeline, but typically you school between like, I don't know, between 30 and 36 weeks or 34 and 36 weeks, I think it is. Um, we do not have to count days where I'm from. Our government does nothing with anything homeschool related. I don't have to do anything. <laughs> there are no requirements. So... I'm just still figuring out a few things about when we're going to start and end um, in relation to my job. My kids would like to start tomorrow if they could. Um, I'm just not ready. Anyways, these are the folders. Um, they're, they come in a hundred pack. We will, whatever's left over, we'll just use for like our own personal files. So that is this pack. I've brought you into my dining area. My kids are just coming in right now. Um, so if you hear them, I ordered all of this stuff from Staples uh, just less than two days ago. It had, they have free two-day shipping. There's my little guy. Um, so this is my daughter's box of folders. I could have picked up most of this stuff at the store except these folders, so it didn't make sense just to place everything for one order. So her folders are these pink ones. And again, they are the Staples brand. They come with a hundred in a box. And then these are the hanging folders. Again, Staples brand. All, pretty much all hanging folders come with 25 to a box. Now, as I mentioned, sometimes, you know, you school for 36 weeks. So that meant we would have to buy a whole other box for, you know, and at this time, I've decided I'm just going to wait. Um, I didn't want to just add this. I'll just buy it in store. I may just wait and add those last 10 folders and recycle the newer ones and put them behind. Like when we complete lesson one, I'll move it to the back and then put in that corresponding week's worth of work. I hope that makes sense. Um, I'm just not married to the idea of spending more money when I may not have to. Um, and so these are black and they are, I did all the legal or the letter size and I'm really hoping that's going to fit in the box. If not, tomorrow I'm going to go pick up my crate from Michael's. If not, I'll just stop at the Staples store and return these and just exchange them for the legal size because, um, my store does have these in stock. I also picked up um, a 29 cent pack of pencils. We usually use Ticonderoga, but these were 29 cents. Um, and I figured you can't go wrong with 29 cent pencils. My kids are not particularly hard on pencils, so I'm not all that worried about them. Um, I also picked up two of these um, binder pockets and they are clear. So with my daughter's work, she's she's going to have all of her work put into a binder. Um, so when the start of the week happens, I will give her her folder and we'll put all of her work. Like all of her language arts will go into one folder. All of her math will go into one. I apologize, my camera cut off. Um, basically, my daughter's weekly work will go into these folders into a binder. I'm going to use my Cricut and I'm going to put vinyl on each uh, folder to tell what work is inside of it. So um, I liked those that they were clear and I'll just get different colored vinyl. I have a bunch on hand already and we'll add that. So that is where I'm at so far. Well, hey friends, so it is a few days later. Um, I'm going to edit my footage and I realized all of my footage was gone to wrap up the crate system and to share with you what I got. Um, so here I am refilming. Um, I did go ahead and get a crate. This was from Michael's and I was able to use a coupon on it, which is great. The color matches our homeschool stuff. Um, we really kind of go with this uh, teal color and black and white and pink. Um, so it just kind of works really perfectly. The, um, the folders 
everything just went really well together. Um, so I did go ahead and set up all of the folders and my son is on um, this side and my daughter is on this side. And the interesting thing to note about the Staples brand folders is that they, the tabs only go one way. So if you are doing this system for more than two kids, I would suggest just making sure that each kid has a different color of folder because then you'll be able to kind of see, um, you know, your kids. <laughs> You're not going to so much depend on the tabs simply because they'll kind of run into one another. Now what I did with my kiddos is that my son's tabs go on this side and then I flipped my daughter's folder around and Staples sort of allowed for this system because they do have the writing on both sides of the tabs. So her tabs just go the other way, which is no big deal. So I have not yet got my ink cartridge. I think it's in my mailbox right now. So I haven't been able to finish my son's curriculum and I haven't been able to start on my daughter's yet, but I will show you kind of what everything looks like. So this is week one. Um, I still do need to probably get some tabs that say week one or folder one or something like that. Um, I think I am gonna do that system. I'm still not 100%. It may just be unnecessary. Um, but anyways, here is his first folder of work, and he's got all of his worksheets in here that I've got prepped so far, and yeah, so, and then it just continues on. And then once they finish that week's worth of work, I will just move this folder into the back. Long about Christmas, we will have enough folders where I can finish my system for the rest of the year. I'll have, you know, 10 weeks worth of folders um, that I can finish till like week 36 or whatever. Um, and I can, you know, around Christmas, I can reevaluate things and redo things that, you know, maybe we need and I'll be on a break. So it'll be good. In the back, I just stuck the folders that we need. Um, for the rest of the folder setup. I do have a folder for each kid for the first of the year, the start of the year, and the end of the year as well. And I did go ahead and put some pages in those things already, um, but everything's starting to fall, so I'm just gonna push it all back. So that is kind of how the crate system is set up for now. I don't think anything is gonna change um, except adding more work to it. I did go ahead and pick up these Latchmate containers as well at Michael's. Mm -hmm. If you are in the USA, you can get these um, all kinds of places. Amazon, Walmart, um, Michael's, I think Hobby Lobby even has them, um, even Home Depot, I believe. Here, I think in Canada, you just can just get them at Michael's um, and you cannot use a coupon on them, which really stinks. So this is how the Latchmate system is gonna work in conjunction with our crate system. Inside of the Latchmate container, I have one, the bottom one's for my daughter, this one's for my son. This pink one is actually just for myself um, to put my own things in, not even necessarily for homeschool. Um, but anyways, the lid comes off and then you have a tray in here. There's all kinds of little accessories that you can buy for in these to kind of organize them a bit more, like different um, square cups and trays. So if you've got a lot of things to assemble or that you want to contain in here in an organized way, they sell accessories for these. Um, I'm not going to get any of those. We don't really need them. Um, we do have a homeschool room, but it's very small and it also functions as my home office and um, the system that I have, I have the IKEA Kalak system and it holds household stuff, but it also holds um, our curriculum and it holds curriculum that we are not using. So I just, the it's just, we don't have the space. So anyways, these latchmate containers are going to hold the things that they need for school. Things like manipulatives and read-alouds and any kind of workbook that can't be taken apart or um, reading book that can't be taken apart. Anything that they're going to need for their school day is going to be in here. We have a caddy for like pencils and glue and all of that kind of stuff so none of that is necessarily going to live in here unless they have special supplies that they want to keep on hand and I did go ahead and buy them um, pencil boxes in their, in their 
latch mate containers already. So this lifts out and you can just put all your things in there. Um, if you're doing the good and the beautiful curriculum, you likely have seen that a lot of homeschoolers are using this for the system. The curriculum fits beautifully inside of here and it fits beautifully for a lot of curriculum too. So there are different sizes of this, of these containers. I took my label off, but I think there it's like 4.5 liters, 14 point five liters of quarts. I can't remember. Um, but yeah, so that will be for all of their manipulatives, reading books, all of their things that they need for homeschool that is not worksheet based and is not just general supplies. So I also mentioned that my daughter is going to be using a, what do you call it, a binder to have all of her daily work in. My son doesn't necessarily need that. He's five and at most I'll just put his work on a clipboard. Um, but she has a lot more things and she's a lot older. So I had mentioned that we got a two pack of these folders and these folders are gonna go in a binder and um, it will hold, she can put all of her worksheets for all of her subjects into these folders in her binder. And to tell the folders apart, I have purchased vinyl and the vinyl I'm going to cut out with my Cricut and I'm going to cut out, you know, whatever subject it is, language, arts, math, um, science, history, geography, that kind of thing. And I'll just put them on the folder. So I'll be sure to share about that once I actually do that system. But uh, for now, this is where we're at in the process and it is all kinds of fun. So this is kind of how things are still looking here in the living room. Our homeschool room is a bit of a disaster, which is why it's all happening in here. Um, and it's easier for me just to do this in my living room as I'm, you know, watching TV in the evening and just hanging out. So anyways, that is kind of it for my setup so far and a look at the crate system. Um, if you've made it this far to the end of the video, you are awesome. Um, I think I will actually have an entire dedicated video just to a short form of how I set up the crate system, um, but I enjoy watching these home school setup videos and thought you might too. So if you're still here, thanks for watching, and if you could give this video a thumbs up, I would really appreciate it. And subscribe if you are not already. We'd love to have you here at Sweetly Home. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!